The time has come to punish. Welcome back to the channel and welcome if it's your first time. We begin today the filming locations for The Punisher, the 2004 John Hensley directed film was created right here in downtown Tampa and other locations among Tampa Bay. We will run down all of those locations today. Thomas Jane playing the Punisher in that film, Frank Castle, and John Travolta playing Howard Saint. This movie, I've always loved. This is a big deal for me, finally tracking down these locations, living in Tampa among these locations for two decades. I'm happy to present this to you. I am Tampa J. There's much ahead. Frank Castle's apartment building sat right up here on the corner of Zack Street, in Nebraska. You can make out the skyline then and now behind the former site of the building. This old building was torn down in about 2009. I remember passing it several times. It was so sad when they tore it down because I knew that was the filming location for The Punisher, Frank Castle's former apartment where a ton of the scenes from the movie went down, including the brawl between Frank Castle and the Russian, the Russian played by wrestler Kevin Nash. Kind of a night shot, but here's a scene when Frank is pulling out of the lot here. You can make out the Hotel Floridian, the old hotel there on the horizon behind him there as he's pulling out in the GTO, taking a right or left here on Nebraska Avenue. And another quick screen grab as Frank makes that right in the car. You can make out the building again right here on the corner. You can't see these buildings because the former apartment building was right there, but you can make out this building and the buildings down twigs here then and now. This had like a tiki hut on it in the movie, but there you go. I just wanted to show you how the streets changed right here at the former site of Frank Castle's apartment, right there on the corner, right up against the sidewalk. Here's the still shot from the movie of the Tampa skyline. And here we are today at a similar angle, standing right on top of the historic Platte Street Bridge. At a similar angle you see in the movie, I present to you 100 North Tampa Street, the Regents Building. Howard Saints office building from The Punisher. I grabbed a screenshot of this doorway here as Howard Saints men are coming out just before the sidewalk. Free money is pouring down. Frank Castle just threw all that money out the, out the window. Howard Saints money. And also this pole is where the former parking meter was. Those guys would have been standing here along with the crowd rushing this way. And here we are inside the lobby of the Regions building. And this is where an epic showdown went down between Saints Men and Frank Castle, the Punisher. Actually, right there around the corner is where it all started. Standing across the lobby right from this exact moment, Frank Castle with the briefcase would have been standing in front of this wall. Right here, you can notice a pattern of the wall in the background and the tile. And this is where he comes around the corner and the two goons, Howard Saints Men, meets him right. Actually, they're standing out there and they meet him right here. The floor has not changed. Notice the pattern there? Frank Castle. Frank Castle would have been standing right there. And then the scene took place further this way. It's a little dark in here, but you have to use your imagination. Saints men here and here, one here, one there. The Punisher, Frank Castle right there in the center. Those doors were blocked in just for the film. Behind him is one of Howard Saints signs there. The Saint Building logo. That was blocked in just for the movie. The glare and the lighting is really bad in here. So I kind of shifted to the left so you could see more of the walls and the circle. Again, Frank Castle right there. One guy here, one guy here. He draws two Colt 45s and gets them both. They actually fall into two glass. There was two glass kind of like tablets here that were like signs and they both fall back and break those. There's a shot of one of the guy's feet right here where that sign was after he just got shot and fell into it. And then Frank Castle, the Punisher, walks right out this door. Right there. 3113 South Waverly Park, this home was the home of Frank Castle and his family. It has changed 
been addition and renovated several times since the time of the film. Actually, it's brick today. It was wood sided in the film. It, it majorly renovated. This this addition over here wasn't here, and this garage was not there. And I only know this because of Google images I had to trace back during the time of the film. Actually, here you go. This is what it looked like. And I'm only showing you a Google image because it was not filmed on the outside. The interior in the backyard was the only thing you saw in those scenes in the movie. And I found it because I had driven around the neighborhood here looking for it, actually all up and down the streets in this vicinity near Euclid and McDill. That's all I had from a newspaper article written about the film during the time of the film. It said that Frank Castle's house was a house near the vicinity of Euclid and McDill. And so knowing that location and matching up an interior shot of the front side of the inside of that door, there's a particular piece of glass I was looking for. Above the front door of the house, notice that piece of glass? It's got a very unique shape. That piece of glass was my clue to finding this filming location. That piece of glass right there that can be seen over Frank and Maria Castle's head from this shot, that is how I found this filming location. Until today, this location has never been disclosed. You're finding it here first if you're watching this video for the first time ever among these filming locations. Now crossing Tampa Bay, we're heading way south. Welcome to Fort DeSoto State Park. Or should I say, welcome to Puerto Rico. We are now approaching the fishing pier here at Fort DeSoto State Park where the scenes from The Punisher were filmed. Now standing before the golf fishing pier at Fort DeSoto, you might recognize it from The Punisher. This is where those scenes went down when Frank Castle's family was killed, right out there on the pier. The scene began here after Maria and Will crashed in the baby blue Chevy Blazer somewhere in this vicinity right over here. And then they got out of the Blazer and first ran up to this building and here we are then and here we are now this bait and tackle shop just before the fishing pier was where Marie and Will tried to seek shelter before running out on the pier I'm about to walk up on that deck but I just wanted to show you the behind the scenes camera angle the camera angle you don't see in the movie that's just the giant parking lot and right here on the corner of the building there used to be a payphone check it out right behind will there notice the railing of the deck that payphone was mounted right there check it out maria and will now running this way you can definitely make out the square at the bottom of this lamp post there keep your eye on that now here's the screenshot again and again, notice the bait house in the background. And then a few moments later in the film and a few moments too late, as we know, Thomas Jane running this way. I'm trying to be stealthy as possible. A lot of people out here fishing, but here's the spot where Maria and Will were ran over. Notice this bench right there and the base of this light pole. Their bodies would have been right here in the center in front of the bench, approaching that bench, it is the same one. That is a great marker, an identifier. This is where they were ran over. And looking back the other way, Frank comes to his family that had just been ran over. And again, the bench there to the left. And then Saint's goons pull around in the truck right there at the end of the pier. And they attempt to run over Frank and come this way the edge of the buildings here. In the movie, these were just boxed in. They're just basically onyx. They were boxed in just for the movie. Check that out. And the truck crashed right here into this pillar. Check out the screenshot. That old Ford truck there, and you can make out the light pole there behind the truck in the back of the screen. And after that crash, the goons get out of the red truck. I just wanted to show you a picture here got Will Patton in the center and James Car Carpinello to the right. 
I always got James Carpinello confused with Hayden Christensen when I first watched this film. Right down here is where the floating dock was put, the fuel dock, the fuel deck, where Frank Castle was blown up at the end of that scene. It was shot and left for dead and blown up right out here at the temporary floating fuel station that was placed here just for the movie. It was right here in this corner to the right of that building we just saw. Now I'm heading out this way along the shore here, out on the beach. There was a couple scenes filmed out here. Oh, they're gonna think I'm a tourist. Should have brought my sandals at least. And here we are along the beach looking back out at the pier that we were just on. Frank Castle and his family, Roy Schreier among them. One of his last films before he passed. Here we are today about the same angle. They were walking just before us. Notice out here, that is not the same group of pavilions of awnings that we were at a moment ago. The second set was used in the movie, but in this brief moment, you don't see these because they weren't there, but you can make out the base of that area right there behind them. The Castle family walking right here in Puerto Rico. Fictionally, Puerto Re the Puerto Rico scenes were filmed in two places here Fort DeSoto and Honeymoon Island. And these rocks can be seen in the movie. When Frank Castle washes up to shore out there, the pier again, there is where the floating fuel dock was where the explosion went off right out there. He would have floated this way and drifted over here. Frank Castle washed up right between those two rocks. Notice the one on the left and the right and the pier. Look at that, that's awesome. Right between those two rocks. And these are actually ruins of an old battery, part of the fort that sunk into the Gulf of Mexico here. An old battery from the fort, that's pretty awesome. Now on top of this dune, so you can get a better perspective, there's the rocks. Frank Castle washed up right there. On to our next filming location. Welcome to the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. This bridge can be seen at the end of the Punisher. Frank Castle standing in the middle of the bridge on top. They would have had to close Interstate 275 in both directions to film that scene. If you're a local, you know how crazy that is, how much traffic passes over this bridge north and south each day and all the tragedy surrounding this bridge if you know those backstories how amazing it was to see the sunshine skyway bridge for a local tampanian welcome to honeymoon island state park or should i say puerto rico and the punisher this is where the beach house scenes were filmed frank castle's family we're hanging out on the beach. Now, I believe this was the beach house from the Punisher. There are a couple other buildings just like this one out here. This one is three, building three at Honeymoon Island State Park. But I believe that this one was the one used on the movie set. This is Frank Castle's family's beach house, the one you see in those scenes. Just because the skylights match up on top of the roof, the windows, and there's some vents up there little poles that stick up and that looks just like the screenshot i have here and you can make out the corner of the ledge of this window from one of the screenshots this is one of howard saint's goons played by actor hank stone his name was cutter in the film but you can clearly see this window behind his head there a little higher up now built up and away from the beach we're about 100 yards from the water and in reality there is no beach house here. This is a restroom, a public restroom out here at the beach. Now the interior scenes you saw of that scene were filmed out here at Honeymoon Island State Park. However, not inside the present day restroom. There was a small building built on the backside near the beach of that set. And that's where the interior scenes with Roy Schreier and Thomas Jane took place where they busted out the guns in that gun case that was in that little building right out on the back side of the former location of this building right here. And now I'm down here at South Beach at the pavilion, checking out the vicinity of where 
the beach house used to sit somewhere in this vicinity out here along the water as you can see the water beside the beach house in the movie looks like they're setting up for a wedding out there right out there check it out and that scene ended with a chase Maria and Will Castle got into that Chevy Blazer that early 90s model Chevy Blazer and they took off down one of the dirt roads here welcome to Davis Island at 40 Bahamas Circle, this home right here was Quentin Glass's house in The Punisher. Quentin was Howard Saint's right-hand man, his concierge. And he was also murdered by Howard inside this house. I'm zoomed in so you could make out this 4-0 symbol. Kind of reminds me of the Fantastic Four logo a little bit, but you can definitely make this out. In the screenshot during the movie zoomed all the way in but Frank Castle was standing right there Thomas Jane to the left where what used to be an automatic gate that draped across the driveway Quinton Glass's house 40 Bahama Circle there you go such a nice neighborhood too check it out Davis Island a little island just south of downtown always like coming out here and getting some good food there's some good restaurants out here on this island all right i better get back in my car i don't think anyone's ever shown this location before i am now entering myrtle hill cemetery where bobby saint's funeral was held at the beginning of the film some quick glimpses of the actual funeral i am pinpointing the funeral location being right over here behind this headstone because of this screenshot you see of this gravestone and this gravestone, a quick glimpse. Now, I've discovered a little movie magic. Notice how it says Frederick here on this gravestone? Well, they covered up the F for privacy in the movie. I'm disclosing it now, sorry. It actually says Redrick in the movie, but it's actually Frederick. They covered up the F. And there's a quick shot of John Travolta, Howard Saint walking this way and that's how I found it the edge of this with the little pot there on the end of this grave and the design here I was looking for Redrick but I found Frederick it took me about 45 minutes to find this this headstone right here it's the only one of its kind in this cemetery I saw it in the background of this screenshot I paused it just right and that's what led me to find the gravestone that says Frederick, not Redrick. I just want to disclose there's not an actual funeral going underneath this awning here, this tent. It's just sitting here on the side of the road. But I want to point out Myrtle Hill, as you see in the background of the at, at the funeral in the movie. There you go. Standing in the vicinity where I think the car was parked, this is a very crucial moment in the film. Well, a very significant one, because this is when the saints give the orders to kill. Frank Castle and his entire family right here. The car was parked at Myrtle Hill Cemetery. Welcome to the Laurel Street Bridge, which crosses the Hillsborough River. This is where Frank Castle was penned in by the assassin, Harry Heck, right up here on the drawbridge as it was going up. Harry Heck, the assassin, played by Mark Colley, the musician. That scene began right up here on the bridge and then led into a chase down Laurel Street towards downtown Tampa. The scene ends over there on the other side of one Laurel Place condominiums. Now standing midway on the drawbridge, this is when the bridge starts to crack as it's going up. Harry Heck just blocked in Frank Castle there in the GTO. You can make out the buildings in the background, the crack and the bridge right behind the GTO there. Then and now actually you can see this portion of it, of the bridge right there. GTO would have been right here. Harry Heck's car over here. But yeah, he would've got pinned in right here, mid-bridge before it raises up. This is the part of the bridge that goes up. Do not drop your phone here. You will lose it forever. Okay, so I'm standing over here. There was a screen grab, a screenshot, a camera angle from the top of the drawbridge as it was going up, shooting down to the filming location. Again, they were right here in this corner. In the movie, the drawbridge arms are about right here present day they were back there just before the 
the bridge. Now standing on Laurel Street and Doyle Carlton, which is crossing this way, the chase comes down the street here, progresses down Laurel, and then right up there before that bridge, that's an off ramp from 275. That is where the GTO flips and the showdown, the final moments of the scene go down. You can make out this bridge and this building in the background on Laurel Street. Here's the screenshot. Notice the building to the right and the bridge and the GTO logo there, the camera angle. The camera would have been on the side of the car actually, but here you go, the bridge and the building again. Harry Heck parks the car, gets out, gun in hand. Notice the structure of the condominiums in the background, specifically right there. There you go, right there. One Laurel Place condominiums just painted a different color, but looks exactly the same then and now. There you go again, Harry Heck coming towards Frank Castle. Flipped over in the street right here where I'm standing in this vicinity. There you go again. Frank crawling out of the GTO, Harry Heck approaching him, about to put the gun in his face. Notice the incline of the hill in the background, the fence line to the left, and the road. Here you go. There's the fence line, the hill in the background. The car would have been right out here. Harry Heck lying dead in the road, about center road there. Notice the yellow line. The car right here, and that manhole cover right there before the car. Here you go from across the street. The camera would have been way up. The manhole cover right here. Gotta be quick because I'm in the middle of the road. Right here, the manhole cover. The car flipped right here. And Harry Heck lying dead over here along the line. That manhole cover wasn't there. Whatever that is in the movie. And again, one Laurel Place condominiums in the background. And for our next filming location, we come to Old Keystone Road near Tarpon Springs, Florida. This is the northernmost filming location for the Punisher. Behind this wall over here, this property is a giant mansion which served as Howard Saint's house in the Punisher. 3385 Keystone Road, right behind those gates. Back there is a giant mansion. Of course, we could not go see it private property oh darn but I did find this aerial view for you on Google Maps check it out and all of the filming locations as far as Howard Saints home inside and outside were filmed around this property around that mansion a 10 foot stone wall all the way around the property can't even get a peek at it holy cow but you can definitely make out 3385 there on the mailbox. Hey, is John Travolta in there? Howard Saint? Anyone listening? He used to be in there. <laughs> I better get going. I feel like someone's gonna scale that wall and shoot me. One of Howard Saint's men. There's cameras everywhere along the wall. I see them. Kind of freaked out. It is a large home. Okay, old Keystone Road and Tarpon Springs Road if you're looking for Howard Saint's house. Okay, now back to Tampa. 1119 Florida Avenue across the street. This parking lot was the former home of the restaurant where the scene went down when Harry Heck played that song on his guitar inside the restaurant to Frank Castle, an assassin sent by Howard Saint. Harry Heck played that song right over here and the former Goody Goody Burger. Goody Goody Burger was the restaurant used in The Punisher. It, it is an iconic restaurant, opened in 1925. Still exists today, just however not here. This is the former location. As you can see, Florida Avenue, a busy street here in downtown Tampa. Doing the best I can with the audio. <laughs> Lots of cars passing by. Now this is pretty cool. I noticed that part of the old sidewalk in front of the former Goody Goody Burger, which used to sit right there, that sidewalk painted green in this old photo. Notice in front of the building, the green sidewalk, and also the storm grate to the right there in the parking lot, and the parking paint markers, the stripes, are still here today. Look, the storm grate, the green sidewalk, and this in the photo, if you follow the storm grate and the parking marker, the yellow strip here, it leads you up 
to the front door, the front door of the restaurant that Harry Heck walked through was right here. Frank Castle would have been in the corner of the restaurant. Harry Heck would have sat at the table, which is kind of, oddly enough, is kind of where you pay for your parking now. And he would have performed that song to Frank Castle as he was sipping on that coffee. And Joan would have been over here in the kitchen. The former Goody Goody Burger sat right here. Thanks for leaving the sidewalk, the green paint here, that used to run all the way along the side, the edge of the building. Look at that. And now welcome to the present day Goody Goody Burger sitting here in Hyde Park at 1601 West Swan Avenue. And the original sign which used to sit outside of the old store on Florida Avenue, that is this sign right here. It's been restored. Check it out. Goody Goody Burgers. I just had to get the Goody Goody Burger. Check it out right there. Look at that. And a giant photo on the wall of the restaurant back on Florida Avenue, back in the 40s, 1949. Look at that. That is the door that Harry Heck walked through. Mark Colley, as he came over here and sang the song. Not here in the bathroom, sorry. <laughs> but there, back in the movie. For this next filming location, we come to Kennedy Boulevard, the University of Tampa, right over here to my right that cannon right in the front yard of it. Over here to the left is the Falk Theater. And this is where Livia Saint went to the movies on Thursday nights, right here in this theater. And also this building right here was her gym. 428 Kennedy Boulevard, the Falk Theater is owned by the University of Tampa. You can make out the University of Tampa logo right there, center of the marquee. You can make that out now and then in the screenshot this screenshot is when frank is looking across the street olivia parks her jaguar over here in this vicinity we'll go over there in a second and walks into the theater and the lobby of the theater which you don't really see you kind of see through the glass at a distance but there you go i love the tile work there the classic black and white checkered floor just to the left of the theater was livia's gym Notice today it says OE on the top there that stands for Oxford Exchange. That stands for Oxford Exchange. That is a popular eatery, but this was Olivia's gym. In this screenshot, she's there getting out of the car. At a different angle, but notice the wall and the windows behind Frank. You see the edge there just beyond the left window. Well, here's that edge. Frank, the Punisher, put that fake hydrant in front of Olivia's car which would have been parked right there to help the scheme, the framing scheme of Olivia having an affair with Quentin. It all began right here. For this next filming location, we cross this bridge from downtown. Welcome to One Harbor Place at the Weston Hotel. Weston was the Windham in The Punisher. And about right here is where Frank Castle pulled up and Livia Saint's Jaguar parked right here. You can make out the handicapped parking side, which was important because he parked there so she could get a ticket so later that Howard Saint would believe the story that Frank made up that she was having an affair. There's actually a screen grab of Frank Castle standing right here looking over underneath that awning over there at Quentin as he pulls up and heads into the hotel. Matching it up even closer, you can make out this awning and these pillars here and some of the building right there behind him. It was at night, so it's a little darker, but if you use your imagination, check this out right here, where it says Weston. I think it says Harbor Island Hotel, which I, I believe that's what it used to be called. And Howard Saint's men walking along the Hillsborough River here behind the fictional Wyndham, present day Wyndham. This is Jackson's to my right, a popular nightclub and eatery. Notice this pole and this pole. The poles have changed. This was a lamp post, but from this screenshot, those men would have been walking right between those two poles. Here you go then. Here you go now. Right there. Filmed in the summer of 2003. Here you go. And here you go today. 
2021, the summer of 2021. I am now standing on the corner of Twigs and Florida Avenue. This building across the street, across Florida Avenue, is the former United States Courthouse, which can be seen several times in the movie. 601 Florida Avenue is now Le Meridian Tampa, which is a hotel, a fancy hotel. So among the steps of the courthouse building, there was a press conference going down, several members of the media and the Tampa PD. This is the spot where Frank Castle reveals himself to the entire community. They all thought he was dead, but now he reveals himself in public. Actually, he was standing over here among this tree just before Florida Avenue. I'm gonna match up some screenshots to show you a little further. You can make out the columns behind the crowd in the background just before the doors. They were coming down the steps here. Screenshot of them standing right here among the steps then and now. Frank would have been standing between this tree and this pole. That is the same tree. It's a little bigger now. It's grown, but not, not grown too big. You, you would think it would be bigger. Also, I'd like to point out in the background behind Frank, the two local news affiliates there and there. You got Channel 8 and Bay News 9. This courthouse was used as the police station in The Punisher. And we know that because the first time you see it is when Mickey is bailed out of jail. There's a shot of him coming down the steps here. You can make out this lamp in the background. There's the screenshot. Notice the pillars to the left and the right just behind him. And here you are today. There's that pillar and the lamp. Mickey coming down the steps here. I just want to point out that the beginning scenes of the Punisher were filmed inside the port of Tampa along the water facing downtown. Actually, you can make out the Marriott building in the background at one point of the scene, but that is where the beginning of the Punisher was filmed. Very secure area. We will not be going inside, but I just wanted to show you that it was filmed here at the port of Tampa. We come now to historic Ybor City. I want to point out that there's a scene when Livia and Howard Sane are riding in the limo. They're coming down historic 7th Avenue here in front of the historic restaurant, the Columbia restaurant that's been slinging that fine Spanish cuisine since 1905. You can make out the restaurant behind the limousine in the screenshot. Just wanted to show you that they passed by this icon, this iconic restaurant here in historic Ybor City. Welcome now to the University of South Florida to the Claw Golf Course. This is where Howard Saint was playing golf. This location, this golf course was only seen for a few moments in the movie. Howard Saint playing golf and finding Frank Castle's headstone, which was planted by Frank Castle. He was sending him a message that he was still alive. It was planted in one of the greens out here on one of the holes. For this next filming location, we come to East Kennedy just before Meridian Avenue. The former bridge, there's a bridge there now, but the bridge that was once here is where Howard Saint tossed Livia, his wife, over the bridge and onto the railway tracks and the train ran over here. This is the vicinity where that happened. Frank Castle crossing the same bridge earlier in the film. Bridge is different, but notice the buildings in the background right here, specifically that area right there. The bridge would have been more elevated. The train track's still here on Kennedy, just before east of downtown. Now standing among the railroad tracks just before the former bridge, John Travolta would have been standing up there he threw his wife, Livia, over the bridge, onto the tracks, and then she was ran over somewhere in this vicinity by the train, which would have been coming this way. Directly below the Sykes Rivergate Tower, the beer can building, sits 400 North Ashley Boulevard, the current day Florida Museum of Photographic Arts, served as Howard Saints nightclub, Saints and Sinners and a numerous amount of scenes from the movie were filmed inside and outside this building and along the sidewalk to the right of it there. Before we get over there, I want to point out that I've been bumping the soundtrack to The Punisher during these filming locations in my car. And what an exceptional soundtrack if you enjoy rock 
metal, hardcore, all kinds of great bands on this album, including Hatebreed, the hardcore band. So yeah, I've been rocking as I'm making these filming locations crossing the street now. Just had to put that in there. I love the soundtrack. Such a great movie all the way around. And here we are, the driveway before the Saints and Sinners nightclub in front of the present day art museum. Check it out. Not much has changed here. They use this as the driveway. Made this building a nightclub because it just looked awesome. And a screen grab looking back the other way. Mickey here on valet duty. Notice the stonework to his left. Much has changed today. This hasn't changed though. All these steps and stuff towards Curtis Hickson Park over there. That is the same and of course the driveway. And also there was a wooded area up here. Back in those days, I remember it. That is where Frank Castle, the Punisher, gathered all his weapons and prepared uh, himself before he came into the club at the end of the movie. Actually, here's the quick screen grab of that moment. Notice the sign midway on the concrete there below his feet. That sign is still here today. He would have been standing right up there. Frank Castle, the Punisher, right up there. The Punisher comes this way. The door was different, but he walked into this door over here to the right on this side of the building. And now it's closed, but this is where those scenes were filmed. Here's a look at it. It's, it's a wide open space, but you can definitely make out the wall structures in the club scenes same walls and here's a look up the second floor to the right over there is where all the offices were and here we are howard saint running for his life john travolta running from the punisher about right here is a similar angle coming straight down this driveway outside of the club the camera turns and now you see john travolta running at this angle running this way this driveway here and these steps Notice those, there's a car sitting right there, that Lincoln was sitting right there. Frank Castle fires a couple shots at Howard Saint, standing right over there. Howard, right over here in front of the driveway, as we know, that's where the car was parked. Travolta would have been laying somewhere on the ground here, and this is when Frank Castle exposes that he was the one that led Travolta to kill his best friend and his wife. This long stretch here of grass boxed in by concrete with all these trees right there, leading all the way down to the museum. That was not there during the movie. There is a storm drain over here on the other side that was and could be seen above Howard Saint's head as he sprawled out on the concrete as he was hooked up to the car, which was sitting right here. Howard Saint would have been over in this area, but you can make this out behind his head. There's the screenshot there. You can definitely make it out behind his head. So he would have been right over here, the car again here, him about to be pulled out there and blown up. Then the car begins to roll across Ashley right here. Notice the bulbs that were here during the movie. Those are gone, but this is the pathway across Ashley that Howard Saint was dragged and all those explosions in the car lot in the movie went off over there. Actually, they did not go off over there. They filmed all those explosions on a lot off of 78th Street in Tampa, just east of here. In the moment of detonation, Frank Castle not looking behind him, detonates the Lincoln as it's going across Ashley right here in this spot. Right here, you can make out this building behind him in the background. That's the Likes building, funny. That's the Likes building, and this, hold on, is the Sykes building. You got Likes and Sykes, just a fun fact for you, but yes. Here is the moment of detonation. Frank Castle walking off. Vengeance was his. The Punisher just punished and walked off this way. I hope you all enjoyed this video today, these filming locations. If you did, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up right down there below the video. I had such a great time with you all tracking down these locations among my home in Tampa Bay. Lots of traffic going by here at the former site of Frank Castle's apartment building. I had to come back here to end it. it just felt right. But thanks again. If you'd like to check out some more of my Filming Locations videos, there is a Filming Locations playlist on the main 
page of my YouTube channel, so check those out. And thank you if you do. Also, if you subscribe, you won't miss another filming location here on this channel. So thank you for doing that also, if you do. I appreciate it. Appreciate everyone for tagging with me, sticking with me. I'll see you in the comment section, and I'll see you in the next video. Know you're awesome, know you're loved, and know there's much ahead. I can hear what you're thinking All your doubts and fears And if you look in my eyes in time You'll find the reason I'm here And in time all things shall pass away And time may bring you back someday to live once more Or to die once more In time your time Shall be no more I hope you like that song I wrote that just for you